Worldview Radio at its best. This is Generations. Folks, half of marriages end in divorce. 36% of children born without fathers in our country today. But our question today is how do you make that 75% of marriages ending in divorce? How do you make that 36% of children born without fathers up to 50 or 60% of children born without fathers? We've got to drive these statistics up. It's been going up, I know, for the last 40 years. It's been exponential, but how do we get them higher? Feminism and humanism is contributing to the devastation of the, or should I say, the beauty of broken families. The population implosion in the West and the liberation of millions of women to have children without fathers. As Gloria Steinem says, this is the vision of humanism. It's the worldview of humanism. Another, another feminist, Anna Quinlan, she said it's important to remember that feminism is no longer a group of organizations or leaders. It's the expectations that parents have for their daughters and their sons, too. So today, folks, we are going to ask the question, how do we raise our sons and daughters to understand this worldview and really live it out? We've got to break down the unity of the family, folks, even more in the next 40 years. We've got to prepare the next generation to contribute to those divorce statistics, to rise, to raise the statistics of children born without fathers. We've got to get a birth implosion going here in America, at least as good as Korea or maybe Italy. How do we do it? Well, let's go over it. Here's how you do it. Here's how you prepare your daughters for divorce. Here's how you make good feminists for the next generation so we can continue the devastation in the West. Number one, you've got to teach your daughter to think independently. Independence is the key here. Independence is the key. If she is ever to be married, she must not be dependent on her husband. And her husband must not be dependent on her Guys, we can't do the 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 11 thing we talked about. These, these children have to be trained to think independently. You've got to prepare your daughter for divorce, and she'll live up to those expectations. Make sure that you get her own independent career track. Tell her that she is not going to be a help me for her husband. She shouldn't think that way. She needs to get a good college education, not to be a good helpmeet, but to have her own independent career track. Because you need to tell her this. You need to tell her that if she's going to get married, she's going to need a career to fall back on. And millions and millions of parents are telling their children this sort of thing. You need to tell your children. You need to tell your daughters. They need to have a career to fall back on because she needs to expect divorce. That's going to be the life she lives. It's not a question of if she gets divorced. It's a question of when and how many divorces she's going to have. So number one, this is crucial. You've got to prepare your daughter to think independence, independence, independence. She will not be dependent on her father, and she will not be dependent upon her husband. And fathers have a big influence on their daughters, too. If you want your daughter to be a good feminist, folks, dads, I need you to listen to me now. If you want your daughters to be a good feminist, don't open the door for her. Let it slam in her face. This is how you do it. Let the door slam in your daughter's face. Don't ever treat your daughter with honor and affection. Don't do that. If you, want, if you want a raging, angry, and bitter feminist, the best thing to do is abuse your daughter. Now, I, I know that's shocking to a lot of people out there, but this is, how, this is how feminists are made. Get your daughter a subscription to Cosmo for Girls. He's got all kinds of articles, uh, how to kiss your first date and make him feel like you're really experienced, stuff like that. And, and, and get them manipulating and seducing at 10 or 12 years of age. They can get the makeup. They know how to. They can train them how to do the makeup and the dress so they can seduce and manipulate at 10 or 12. You see girls do that all the time. Remember, it's manipulation, manipulation. Uh, women can't succeed but with their muscles for physical abuse. Guys are prepared for that. That's what we prepare our guys to do. 
But but women are prepared to manipulate emotionally. This is how they overwhelm and overcome the other sex. Remember, unity is not what we're after here. We don't want unity. We want the husband and the wife to be at odds. We want the woman manipulating emotionally. We want the man physically abusing. This is the way you construct a disunified marriage. And get her that prostitute Barbie, too, and teach the, the prostitute Barbie, you know, the one that manipulates by the way she dresses and so forth. Have her manipulate Ken a little bit, and then teach her how to kick Ken out of the house. All right? Te teach, teach Barbie, or get the, get the Barbie to, to give Ken the big old boot and get him out of the house. That's good training for good feminists. Early on, you need to teach her that there's no difference between her and her brother. There's no difference between boys and girls. Make sure she does exactly what her brothers do. Get, get her into a karate class with the boys so that she can, she can be operating on the same level. Remember, it's not dependence, it's independence. Remember, it's equality. We have equal roles here, so make sure that you are meticulous about this. There is no difference in roles. You're rejecting the Bible. If you're going to reject the biblical roles for woman and man, then you've got to get them on the same level. And keep her away from small children at all times. This is the other thing, because remember, no roles here. So keep her away from the small children, because you know what happens to a little 12-year-old girl? She, she grabs a little baby, and she holds those babies. She takes care of those babies. She walks around with those babies in her arms. And this, this, is, this, is not, this is not the feminist, folks. Make sure she doesn't know how to change those diapers, fix meals, comfort a one-year-old when she skin his knee or any of that garbage. Make sure she doesn't know how to be a good homemaker. Finally... You have to teach her all these things in the public schools, in the books she reads, in the movies she watches, the friends she keeps. But if you're really going to be successful at this, folks, you must lead by example. Show her that your priorities are not with home and family. Instead, mom and dad should each pursue their own careers, and the children should be left in daycares and kindergartens and public schools and colleges until they're old enough to have their own, their own family, whatever that was. And you've got to show her that in a normal home, a woman never submits to the husband in marriage. Make sure she knows that the marriage covenant is no big deal. And spouses can just get divorced when things get tough and somebody nicer comes along. And make sure there's no economic unity in the home. Everybody gets their own career track. You have to show that the family isn't the place where the father and the wife train and disciple their kids to fear and honor the Lord. That, my friends, is how to prepare your daughters for divorce. Well, Dave, that was kind of a long, uh, that was a long presentation, but you know I'm afraid that happens. And the reason we brought this out is because this is the worldview that we are raising our girls in today. Let's begin where we began, and that was: 36 percent of children are born without fathers, and the family is coming apart in the Western life. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. It's the way we teach our children. It's the way we raise them. The Proverbs, Proverbs 14 and verse 1 says, The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. That is the way that she does her work, the way she does her career, the way she builds other things. She can, she can break her house down. Well, the Word of God warns us about breaking down our homes. And I think it's time we get back to God's Word and what it says about being a woman. You know, God created man and woman in His image. And He has a plan for man and woman. And He brings us out in His Word. Genesis chapter 2 says that woman is created to be a help meet for that man. She is to be dependent upon Him, and He is to be dependent upon her. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. They make a unified household together. And everything we do, everything we do in our economics, in our house, in our education, ought to encourage, ought to support that unity. And people like Gloria Steinem and the feminists of the last several decades have done everything they could to rip apart the unity of the biblical household, of the biblical family, of the biblical marriage. We need to bring back a unified biblical vision for the household, and it will include economics. That woman, according to Titus chapter 2, is to be the manager of her home. She is to be the ruler. She is to be the homemaker in her home. 
That is what God intends for our ladies. He has assigned the role for them. So what we have is a comparison here. And my question is, dads, what's your vision for your daughters? Is your vision that they contribute to a world where 36% of children are born without fathers? Where half of marriages end in divorce? Where there is no unity in the household? Where these feminists are angry and bitter and loud and domineering? Is that what you want or do you want God's vision of a...